Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Hello and welcome um, to this workshop. Again, y'all know me, I'm Chris, and this is on Libra and Tarot and the three decans of Libra. Um, and so you can have your deck out if you if you have it out and pull out those three cards, you can have your birth chart out if you'd like um, to see if you have any placements within Libra. But before we do that, uh, we're just gonna look at the agenda. And so we'll drop in, we'll open up the circle. We will define decanic dignity, review it again. I know I went over it last time, Rachel, but it's still you know, a big, a big thing. Um, I'll introduce the work by Bell Hooks and then we'll have a mutual contemplation of the cards reflection and integration, um, questions and review, and then like closing the circle. And so whenever you're watching this, wherever you are right now, I invite you to just take an exhale, settle yourself. And so we'll do a breathing exercise and we're going to put our pinky fingers at the bridge of our nose and our index fingers at our temples and then our middle fingers. <laughs> at the brow, at our brow point. And so really kind of going around the crown, going around the, the framing of the skull. And you can exhale and we're gonna inhale fast for 12 counts, three times. And so it's gonna go like this. And then like, it works on your core, okay? So I'm trying to do it through my, nose through but if you can only do it through your mouth that's fine it's okay <laughs> and so really try and apply pressure again at your temples at your bridge of your nose and then above your brow bone all right and so you can go ahead and exhale and then we're going to inhale for 12 times starting now and inhale again And inhale again. All right, and I can invite you to now continue inhaling and exhaling through your nose as I offer up the smoke, the sacred stage, attunement with our breath fresh blood flowing within us. We offer the smoke to the four directions. Thankful for this moment, blessing and honoring this moment. To the east of air and of insight, to the west of water and release, to the north of purpose and destiny, to the south of ancestry and passion and fire. And to our hearts, we open up into the space, a safe space for learning and insight, honoring our soul. I need to exhale. All right. Thank you, Spirit. All right. So you can flutter your eyes open when you are ready. Um, and let me know if you have any questions at any point in the chat box or anything like that. It'll be sort of more of a lecture flow. You can just go along. Um, and let me know if you need me to go over anything. And so first off, this workshop, we're looking at these three cards and like this is a monthly workshop and it's really seeing the cards as a calendar, all right? And so each of the three cards are tied to a certain zodiac season. And so we can really see the cylindrical measure of time that rather than, you know, a flip book calendar where you're getting like the image, <laughs> perhaps, you know, what it is, you're able to like flip a card and sort of get a sense of like the energy um, of that space and time. And then the more you know about astrology, the more you know about tarot, um, the more applicable it can be. And so what we're looking at to get this calendar, right, this measure of space is the decanic dignity. That is what each of the minor cards represent. So it is a 10 degree division of space, which gives us a 36 week calendar. Um, and so we're using the two through the tens, the aces of the minor cards are not counted. They encompass the whole direction and the whole um, element, right? And so this gives us again, more specificity into the unfolding energy of the year. The decans are this ancient system of dignity, right? First emerging in Egypt, back to the early third millennia. 
their images um, have evolved throughout the time, meaning that like our current use of the tarot and understanding them as windows into time, windows into space through the like through these decans. Decans have had different images. Um, they've had different cultural adaptations, but they've all sort of been thought to possess this. Uh, they're being channels to gods, open opening up to like different spirits and really getting in energy of like the lessons of that spirit and who to call upon during that period in time. And so, uh, let me see, there we go, all right. And so um, decanic dignity, right, is a form of dignity which we measure planetary strength and its ability to see its function, right? Like our sun, we, our sun wants to shine, our sun wants us to be seen, wants to develop the self, right? Venus wants to relate, like all of these planets have different energies and there's these different impulses within us. And so when we're looking at dignity, it's also sort of a way of looking at privilege because many of the dignity systems are relational to one's family, to one's land, to one's nation. And so someone with like a Mars and Aries might be like, that's this white male, right? Type of like male privilege or there being a certain level of strength, ability to assert themselves and their purpose. Um, and so we have different dignity schemes. Now, the one that the tarot in astrology, right? That the tarot is, is synchronized to is decanic dignity, which is an individual form of divinity that the native finds through their own means, through self-determination. And so when a planet is placed in its own decan, because these decans now, these, rather than like a month, right? And you know, it's like Libra season. It's like, okay, these 10 days are ruled by this card and this planet in this card, right? And so um, if you have any planets there, it gives it a little bit of extra strength. We're getting this sense of like a person who is a foreigner, a person who is a trans migrant, affirm sovereignty in a new land and that's the sort of lens that we are we can understand the system of tarot even um as it has often been thought to be used by many like vagabonds right uh the dignity of one who is in a foreign land with no family of their own yet who to their own skill and virtue make a name for themselves austin Coppock writes this from 36 faces which is the book on the decans although it's out of print working on a second edition um all their dignity schemes again as i said depend on relationships to others and to group belonging which is necessary and folded into it but like we're looking at this individual sense all right um and so again it is libra season and so the card associated with libra the sign rolled by venus it is a diurnal sign um it is the seventh sign of the zodiac diurnal meaning like of the like venus's masculine external expression we see justice here. That is the major arcana card that is associated with Venus with Libra season. And I know in Mercury retro has been retrograding <laughs> through Libra, Mars is in Libra. There's been a lot of Libra energy and there may be like all of this searching for truth and balance within relationships, this maintaining of sovereignty, the sense of integrity, this karma by being uh, consequences of one's choice is just coming to bear fruit. And it's, I've been seeing justice, delivering justice like left and right. I don't know about y'all. Um, it is a cardinal air sign, meaning it's the beginning of the air triplicity. It's the beginning of a season, right? It's fall. Um, there's an initiatory energy to justice and to Libra, starting a relationship, starting a communication. Seventh is the interpersonal. We see this justice figure mediating the scales um, between these two pillars, right? in front of the veil, guarding the veil. And so there's a balance between life and death. There is the weighing of the heart against a feather, the purity of one's heart being the determination um, to live in truth and live in integrity and find a lasting commitment and like being committed to one's truth. And there being a sort of veil that this figure, right? We see them with the crown. We see the power of the judge we're seeing um, this person with the sword piercing like all the way to the top of the card, right? With this sword of truth and victory and, and identity and the way that like one's identity and the sacrifices for integrity are held against the needs of relationship and how we sort of um, can be inflated or deflated, right? In our estimation of value by others and the mirroring of others um, and how we know ourselves often in relationship and get a better sense of who we are by what is reflected back to us or what we're drawn to that whole yin and the yang quality, right? Um, and so Libra seeks harmony. There seeks to be an accord. There seeks to be, there seeks 
is this impulse towards justice, which we will look even further into with these three cards and sort of break apart um, this major arcana card, right? And we're gonna get like three different minor card bases for it. And so first though, we will talk about all about love, bell hooks. Um, one of my faves, right? And so hooks in this book explores the question, what is love? And as you can see her name, she purposefully keeps her name lowercase. Um, it is just always want to throw that out because people, you know, it's not that I'm not capitalizing your name. It's like to be um, lowercase. All right. And so in this book, she's really taking apart like these cultural paradigms. She has this massive Libra stellium, right? Like look at all of this, like the sun, Mercury, Saturn, Neptune, and Venus and Vesta, all in her fifth house of like creation and romance and joy and pleasure and like self-assertion. It's very much the Leo house where we want to be seen. Um, and we can see that she has like this book all about love. One, <laughs> she's talking about justice and the truth and honesty required for love, right? And she would know she has planets in every decan. And so if you're looking at your birth chart or, you know, if you're familiar with your birth chart, find wherever the Libra sign house cusp is, right? And then pay attention to um, the themes of that house. And you can put in the chart if you have it and let me know. And it can like give you some feedback on like, um, what house topics are associated with what we're going to be applying today, right, with Libra, um, but also it's just, and if it's empty, right, um, you're going to look at the ruler, so of course we're looking at Venus, Venus is in her own sign here in Bell Hooks chart, which is very strong, um, she's ruled, like she's at her throne, she's sovereign, that is that judge up here, and we know Bell Hooks has a sharp tongue, and she's balancing, right, all of these things she's balancing within Libra the sense of self, right? Writing and communication, Mercury, the sense of societal limitation and like societal inheritance. And like, uh, she has that, this is the three of swords, right? Saturn and Libra here, um, Neptune and Libra. There's this like deep dream and this deep vision and this deep spirituality that she speaks to in her work that is also used as a method, a tool against um, societal injustice, which is obviously like this, the Saturn and Libra, like the social quality of like imbalance, right? And inequality. Um, and at the same time, and then she has Vesta right there with Venus too, like keeping this sacred hearth fire. And so the decans um, are split between 10 degrees. So we're seeing here that we can like, so from zero, right? To what is it? Uh, nine degrees or so around there, you know, because of the way that zero is the first degree. Um, is going to be the two of swords, then the next 10 degrees of space. So she has the sun and Mercury would be like this two of swords image for her, right? We can show that for those, a way to <laughs> even balancing the mind against like the spirit. Um, and then let's see, these two will say, well, it'd be like 19 and some change, right? Because 20 is technically the beginning of the last decade. The next 10 degrees are going to be the three of swords. So an image for that 10 degrees space would be associated with her Saturn and Venus there. I mean, um, Neptune. And then the last 10 degrees, really Neptune here, I'm bordering right at 20 degrees to the last to like 28 and some change because 29, well, it just goes over and begins like Scorpio, right? Um, 30 degrees of space. Those last 10 degrees would be associated with the four of swords. So she's writing about like, this book is a whole insight into these three cards. She's writing about them and we shall see. All right. So first, we're going to look more deeply um, at the two of swords. I hope that was clear as well. Again, if it's these cards can be an insight into a specific part of your chart. And so if you know that you can put it in the question box. Um, otherwise, you can research right the first house of self money, um, siblings thought process and like on about the will. This is more tarot centric. Okay. Um, and so the two of swords is Libra one, the first decan, and it is the moon in Libra. That is the ruler of this card. And so what we're seeing here, right, is this image of justice. Notice, and so the moon is associated with um, the high priestess. And again, Libra is justice. So the Libra is going to be the mainstay behind each of the cards. And so we're getting two major associations with this one card, the moon in Libra. There's a sense of... Um, balancing between these two extremes that justice and the high priestess mediate. They're the mediators between 
the more rational injustice and the irrational high priestess, life and death here, um, what is day and night, what is seen and unseen versus right relationships between people and between partnerships and like written contracts and like things in the, in the daylight. Notice that it's night here with the blue, right? Versus the yellow sun. And so, right, this like more golden shining, like um, this contract needs to be visible to all. Whereas like the high priestess, there's like an internal reading that is happening. And so we're seeing the, that polarity of two at odds here within the two of swords. Um, we're seeing like this woman dressed in white. All right, she's sitting on a stone bench. There is a calm waters um, behind her, right? There's an open pavement, like it's a smooth road, right? Or she's in like the smooth place um, that she's resting upon, but stone. And then there is a moon, a crescent moon, a waxing moon coming into fullness. So I think that's really interesting. There's a two, of course, the Roman numeral two. There's like the Pamela signature. She has like some yellow kind of slippers here sort of tied to this um, moon here. And so this period of time is September 22nd through like October 1st. Honesty is one part of truth telling. Moon and Libra. All right. So if you're say if you get this card, if you have any placements within this card, there may be this tension and this inability. I have a moon in Libra. If you have a moon in Libra, <laughs> this card is one of you know the cards that are a mirror for you in the tarot. Um, and so Bell Hook says often when information is withheld by women and men, protection of privacy is the justification. We can see that information is being withheld. It's like a no. It's a psychic block that this card is, right? There's like a, there is no justice. If there's the open hands of justice, there is like, of course we know that that's an X, that's a block. Um, there's a crossroads, there's a choice to be made and it's dealing with swords, which is communication, which is truth and, and communication, um, information. In our culture, privacy, in our culture, privacy is also confused with secrecy. Open, honest, truth-telling individuals value privacy. We all need space where we can be alone with thoughts and feelings, where we can experience healthy psychological autonomy and can choose to share when we want to. Keeping secrets is usually about power, about hiding and concealing information. So this is from chapter three, um, honesty, be true to love. And I can see even her book structure is the sort of journey of Libra, all right? And so we're beginning here, like if you're getting this card, it's there's a masking process that is happening. There, there's this dissociation that happens because of power. So she's bringing in justice, she's bringing in the society. Um, to be able to create a false, like in Libra is this politician, this like sweet talker, this one who knows how to air, like present and tell people what they wanna hear, how to put on a false mask, how to not express like the deeper, more judgmental justice, right, truth that they may be feeling or witnessing. And this card is a really sort of dangerous and nefarious card, like when it's unconscious, right? Because we have to break through a state of denial in this card. We're saying one thing, um, we may be presenting ourselves in a certain manner to be likable, to maintain a, a peace. She is holding these two crossing swords, right? And there's an incredible tension that's like being held within her body. And like, how long can her body literally hold this? And at the same time, like it's this peaceful environment, you know, it's very calm. And so there's something stirring within the unconscious as indicated by the moon, right? Because the moon is our nighttime consciousness, the, the, the moon ruler. And we even see that that moon is a waxing moon, meaning it has not come into full illumination. You know, it's sort of in a similar period. We've just had that new moon. We're working towards that Aries full moon um, in the new moon in Libra. Right. And so there's uh, impulse, there's um, something, some inner truth that we feel stirring deeper within us. But on a social level, right, Austin Coppock writes here, the sleeping figures here wake the sleeping masses to the injustice all around them. And so there's some denial happening here. There's some avoidance of truth. So there's some communication being withheld. Give love words, Bell writes. Right. Like this is a time to speak truth and to be honest with oneself. And the piece here is pacifying, concealing inequalities, a power imbalance, like doubled, right? There's just like a close your eyes to it, just go to sleep, like just keep, and there's like, nope, <laughs> no justice here. Justice is not here. Justice is not here because there is no honesty here. 
there is a false mask presented and that is distinct from like needing privacy right and i think this card is like a balance between that but not presenting a false self um in order to like maintain because when you start uh, so like when a false self gets the light and by the light i mean that conscious self-expression within relationships and the truer aspect of us gets thrown into the darkness into the shame gets forgotten about right there's um, a conflict and we can see within this card a major tension held within the body there's a major conflict um at the heart right and it's internally felt and it's just sort of this stasis this stagnancy um, this though is this survival strategy to avoid conflict right because it's about peace it's about waking up to peace and sort of thinking like well if i can just get it to be calm right thinking that that is like true peace like if everything is pacified if everything is just still for a moment right i'll 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 step out and it's like self-sacrificial one's truth because it's going to be disruptive or like insertive or just um illuminating right and so it's a big card. It's again, all these issues of power, but like our interpersonal relationships within the moon, this sort of wound goes to childhood. Um, we create a false mask, right? To mask fears and insecurities, which detaches us though from our emotional self. And because it is the moon in Libra, that speaks to our early childhood conditioning around learning and being proprietous and um, not getting in trouble because uh, and repressing honestly sexual urges bodily urges bodies your body's truth and you were told to be we were told right to be quiet to be silenced um to say to say yes to just submit to a level of control and exertion over us that we there was like that our first and primal sense of injustice or imbalance or having our truth transgressed upon was by our parents right and like fighting or like with the nurturing and this whole um, wound that like festers and it grows over time. And so often this card can depict the wounded child, right? Um, the one in order to survive, in order to avoid abuse and to avoid violence and to avoid um, a sort of state of chaos, right? As a child, they learn how to cope. They learn how to adapt and like be fluid and say what they want to say um, in order to get, to avoid the risk right, to really avoid the risk. But what happens is it detaches us from the deep intimacy of relationship. And so when we hear another person's, right, because this card, like her, she's blindfolded, she's not seeing, you can tell it goes over the ears, they are, all right. Um, there's these two swords, it's like taking up a, a majority of the space, it's very active. If we're getting this card in relationships, or if you have any placements, there may be this sense of projection onto the other person or being projected upon which is much harder to do when we are actually hearing, right? Their thoughts and their beliefs and their feelings. We can't project this perception and this, and this mask onto them and it just be superficial. And Libra gets criticized a lot for being superficial. Um, and I think it is because we, there's a hiding of a deeper wound, of, an, of a deeper injustice that seeks retribution. You know, there's like uh, that part of us that, either this card can be a card of dissociation from the body of severance from the body in order to separate from the wound but there is an avoidance of it and the cards i think bring us to this state of avoidance and what happens is like those two swords become these two warring perspectives these two voices in your mind right the one who is criticizing the one who is judging the one who is still holding like that you know when they get off the hook like when justice is not served it's like you hold on to that and you're like being judge and jury and like prosecutor right and there is that voice of like what needs to happen and how the world needs to order in order to like restore the justice lost and then there's this other like shadow shame voice within us that we don't express that is like you know breaking us down or that is like telling us we can't do the thing or like making us doubt making us anxious making us fearful you know, being our own heckler type of thing. And they can relate in in this, like this state where our internal yin and yang, our internal balance, right? The two polarities, like our conscious and our unconscious, our will, our ability to surrender, well, yet assert, right? Are at war here within ourselves. There's like an internal psyche structure between, not because what happens when you have a false self and you're presenting this image and you're saying everything's fine, 
And it can be very unconscious how we present these masks because we've learned them as a coping strategy since childhood. And to, to actively unmask is a difficult thing and it takes a lot of consciousness and awareness to do, um, right? But in doing so, there's no longer of a, like a living with suffering or there's, but there's the integration process can happen. And there can be a retribution of truth. There can be um, letting other people know what happened, right? And so like, what secrets are you keeping? If this card is coming up, that's a great question to ask yourself. How and when does emotional withholding violate a relational commitment of honesty, right? What is the difference between privacy and secrecy? What are the emotional costs of keeping a secret? This is definitely at, at play here, right? If you have any questions or comments or anything, just let me know if you'd like taking a sip. All right. Um, and so Bell Hooks really relates this to um, patriarchy, of course, right? Given that patriarchy wounds the males and like the male bodies um, and like boys, gender, you know what I'm saying? Um, in this sort of paternal sadism by not allowing the boy to like claim his true feelings, to harden up, right? To be tough, to be a boy, to not cry, to just show up and be this like pillar of strength defined by an emotional crippling, right? And so whereas like, as Bell Hooks describes, like for femmes and for the wounded female child, um, truths, the, the body's truths are silenced to attract and to please others right, to be docile and to be in, enticing and enduring and like to serve others. And so there's um, a fear of aggression from the truth, right, the emotional truth and the fullness is fearing that the female will be too male, too aggressive, right? Again, those two polarities at war with each other or that the male, the more masculine, the more assertive, right, um, is threatened by like this emotionality and this like more femininity. Right, and yet, of course, we're one full complex whole being and we're seeing that patriarchy has really dichotomized these two things and yet work to the same effect of silencing us and silencing our truth. And so, like, a, right, assertive opinions and voice are encouraged as a positive sign of manhood, whereas women are punished for talking back. And they are encouraged by sexist socialization to pretend and manipulate, to lie as a way to please, right? And so this, over time though, alienates us from our true feelings. And you see this sort of alienation here. Like who is this? This person, like this person is a anonymous, right? They're just all in white, just like a full projector, like ready to receive, right? Um, this is an intense one. Uh, and so this of course alienation leads to dep depression, right? It leads to um, a loss of self-awareness. It leads to just a zoning out. And so this really card invites us and invokes us to assert, to speak our truth, to find our truth, to not be shamed by the truth and in the unmasking. Um, and really consider more how withholding is, is lying, right? And like saying you saying not, if you're not telling your honest truth, like it may be this injustice, like we can feel and, and present or put up this false mask in order to like deal with an injustice done to us but then we are also like perpetuating that same injustice of like being dishonest within our relationships and and it leads to you know what we will see the three of swords right um and so the lying to avoid conflict is like some moon and libra stuff and it's very bodily because it just can't stand it. don't know if you can handle the truth don't know if you can handle the weight of the truth type of thing um, but this card is really an invitation into self-acceptance, which is very hard because of that voice within us, right? That has been from a childhood, that childhood shame around typically sexuality, around um, our pleasure principle, around our joy, around our voice, around the things that gave us joy and being told to silence that and then feeling a way about that and then acting out because of that. But that, if you can accept and turn towards that, there could be a lot of integration um, and you know, this card is very much that self-negation there. It's like, you're closing off on yourself. You're, it's a negative thinking, right? The X being the negative, the swords being the thinking, 
and binding oneself by their, their, their thoughts, right? And so this is a very powerful card, I think, to show up if it's showing up for you or for clients, if you have anything here to really um, see when you're self-doubting, when you're self-negating and like what that, who that voice is, where that voice comes in from, right? Where does it stem from? What events, right? Um, and so, because as a child, we our attempts at self-assertion failed and it was not an adequate defense. And so putting up a mask was, right? But this is the time where we have to like integrate and speak our truth and be honest and find that like when we reveal, our, reveal ourselves to our partners, Libra, right? This will bring healing rather than harm. And that intimate relationships can provide like a sanctuary as we will see through the four of swords. And so let us move on to the three of swords, which is Libra two. Um, Saturn and Aquarius. And so it's the three of swords, right? This red heart, um, the sort of red kind of standard iconic heart pierced by three swords. There's rain clouds. There's like three rain clouds it's raining down. It's like sort of floating in the air. Um, and then we have the world. So that's associated with Saturn in the majors. And then Libra, of course, justice. And we see again this integration here of Saturn. Uh, this Ouroboros is beginning and the ending, this like unifying of these two polarities of self shown by these double-ended wands in both hands. Okay, this is thought to be an intersex figure, person, like the dual god divinity. Um, we have four signs, four fixed signs around the zodiac, Taurus, Leo, uh, Scorpio for the eagle, and then Aquarius for the water bear, right? And then again, we still have justice and so we're going for something more formal and rigid and this red of the sun um, of assertion um, the stone truth very much that other figure was sitting on a stone like justice's bench right but uh it, it was a there was no justice there <laughs> okay and we're getting this sense why three of swords here all right so this is from october 2nd through october 11th or so or 12th or so okay depending on each year and Bell teaches us here that love is the letting go of fear. This is the truth disclosed. So Saturn, right? Saturn is a planet which is like the, the reaper, the one who's, who comes with their sight and they clear away and they're like this death force, right? This restriction force, this cutting away of karmic relationships within Libra. But Saturn is exalted in Libra. Saturn is at its strongest. And that is because both Saturn and Venus are invested in value. When you have Saturn with Libra, the contracts, the one-to-one -one partnerships, the marriage, Saturn makes that long lasting. And so this part teaches us about the weight of commitment. And like the, I call it the badge of the true heart, right? Because it's the heart that knows the pain and the sacrifice required for that lifelong commitment to not just be this fleeting thing, this thing that you say yes to, right? Automatically, because you just want to make the other person happy or like secure them or all of these ways that we've been dis distanced from the body. But then inevitably that heartbreak comes because you, we've agreed to something or we presented something that we don't actually feel. And just because we don't acknowledge that shadow self or that voice or that truth that needs to be spoken does not make it go away. It's going to assert itself in different ways. And it's going to, the, the consequences of that are seen in the three of swords, right? Um, Saturn comes and clears it away. And there's like this illusion that shatters, right? There's like this perfect 2D image of love that is like beautiful and bold and red, you know what I mean? But it's also very two-dimensional. And the three swords rip it into these three dimensions. It adds a whole new layer of truth and reality to one's experience of love. It like opens you so much. And so I always say too, this part can be from a heartbreak to like a heart opening. Um, and so Bell writes within this, like so many seekers after love are taught in childhood to feel unworthy, that nobody could love them as they really are. And they construct a false self. In adult life, they meet people who fall in love with their false self, but this love does not last. At some point, glimpses of the real self emerge and disappointment comes. And that is what this card sort of represents. And when I found out it was Saturn and Libra, which was exalted, it really, it's, it's I really love this card, <laughs> I would say, uh, because it's just like a protector. It's the shield of the heart. Also, it's this like blocking, like you can't, 
this heart has truth defending it, right? And so it's about this endurance of love. Um, again, Saturn is a karma keeper in relationships here. The promises and contracts that link people together are created and tested here in this degree, in this decan of space. If you have any planets here, right? There is like this ancient, um, this deep sort of karmic experience of going through this event of like testing truth in relationships experiencing heartbreak, experiencing pain, experiencing the disappointment of trying to bond with someone when it is not the true self that is bonded, right? And how to get out of the illusion of like projecting that onto the other person, really taking account ownership and accountability for the, the alienation from self. Ooh, okay, awesome. Um, well, let me know if any of this resonates with you. Have any questions? Okay, Rachel, I'm all awesome. I hope that this is illuminating though, right? And so like, uh, let me see. Okay, okay, okay. And so facing this part, it's like breaking illusions just over and over. And it's like really painful because we have this like pie in the sky, heart in the sky vision of, of love and romance and all these things. And it's not yet integrated into the body, but this part integrates it, right? Um, illusions shatter, right? Which stand in the face of our learning pattern. To sustain our fantasy, we substitute romance for love. Um, in this decade, we learned that love is not just a strong feeling, but a decision, a judgment, a promise, and a choice. Love is this active process that we can do, right? And so um, Toni Morrison as well talks about, like Bell Hooks references Toni Morrison saying that uh, romantic lore is perhaps like the most destructive thing to human consciousness. Because this illusion, right, perpetually by media of the way that we just fall in love takes away our agency. It takes away the depth of commitment and the work required Saturn. Saturn is all about work and time and maturation and patience and really like you're giving your word your all. And often this part is like the weight of the truth and the true bond and the true word that was spoken by, which requires like you fully being there, not that two of swords like saying yes, but feeling away or. You know what I mean? Just holding back, just like being a ghost through the space. All of those relations we built upon that eventually break because they're not true, but we deeply seek a true soul hunger. But Saturn is our shadow, right? Saturn is the dark sun, as it's noted. Saturn is lead. Saturn is that depressive force that we see associated with the of swords, the heartbreak of relationships, right? But it is what we fear because it's the truth. It's that shame, again, like that beautiful queer, whatever bold, loud, tomboy, like, you know, just weird, whatever unique child you were that was shamed and was told to be silent because you were just offensive to the social decorum or from or for more intense, right, reasons of abuse um, becomes over time, there's this, there's this distortion of what we see in the mirror. And eventually that becomes the devil, right? This voice that shames us because there's this hurt and we sort of abandon that part of ourselves. We agree to inflict pain and like we feel guilty for our joy or for our sexuality or for these true things about us. And eventually that becomes the devil that we're scared to see, Saturn, right? But like Saturn is the face of truth. And this part is like that unmasking. Like, can I show the pain, the primal pain of my heart? And there, it's like, no, I have that secret kept, you know, within the two of swords, if we're going from the two, she sort of, we can see like, if we are, um, if we, she's blocking that heart and she's just like, no, I'm not going to share my pain with you. Like I can't, like I, I don't even, it's not even fully conscious to me of how I like dissociate and deny myself and this other voice that I'm just living with and just, keeping up appearances and just figuring out how to navigate society, right? Well, her, it's like the arms open and what we're seeing within that part is like this transmutation process world, right? There's like the lessons, there's a maturity, there's an integration happening. Um, when this card is, when this card appears, or again, if you have this card as an image for your birth chart, you know, as mentioned. Um, and so let me see, these three swords could be the foundation, the choice of care, knowledge, and respect, which intensifies romance and destroys the illusions around our romantic world of falling. 
In this decan, we can view a partner objectively and find that talking does not kill romance. There's this whole notion of just like, there's no ever consent process in movies and you're just supposed to click with someone. It's just supposed to be sensual. And there's never like this actual true commitment because it's so difficult, right? But actually all of those things can coexist. Um, because a promise though, right? Risks betrayal, agreements must be written with care. In this deck and we are in the badge of the true heart and learn the principles required for lasting agreements. It becomes a perfect love when our, when our passion um, navigates a, inspire, well, I don't know why I put naive, us the courage to face reality gives us, I think, the courage to face reality when our passion gives us the, I'm sorry, that was a Mercury retrograde moment, okay? <laughs> it becomes a perfect love um, when <laughs> passion, right, which is that more immediate, perhaps like fifth house energy before we're getting to the seventh house. Um, <laughs> she's talking about passion too, because she's at that fifth house stellium, okay? Um, gives us the courage though, to actually be honest, right? It comes to this point to like show the person, let the person in to like speak the truth and like admit the pain or acknowledge the truth. And then to embrace your true self, like that is a really healthy foundation of love or definition of love. One which we don't keep by, again, a false self or lying or needing to like um, hold ourselves back or withhold our truth or to shame ourselves in, into being a certain way, criticize or judge ourselves to being a certain way to maintain a relationship versus, right, actually the, the sort of love that inspires us to be honest and courageous and true and to really be safe enough to, to really disclose, right? This part I think is really big about like disclosure. Um, and this is like, people are so afraid of true love people because that deep intimacy, intimacy that deep soul viewing, right? Like not this superficial shallow thing, like that does not satiate us, that does not satisfy us. Like to have this anchored long lasting soul commitment Right, requires like a deep seeing of the full and totality of a person. And that's deeply terrifying if we're still, if we're still imprisoned, if we've still imprisoned ourselves, devil, right? Libra and justice. Like justice is like where you get your sentence. Like you, oh, I'm still serving time and you want to be in a relationship with me? Well, I'm sorry, I'm still gave myself how many years to be, you know, like from this childhood trauma of mine, from this experience, from this heartbreak. Like I'm still serving time over here. Right? What do you mean you want to come and love me and see me and that I'm just free to go? And like, actually, I'm like, right, we can't accept those things if we're still um, being punitive with ourselves that out of shame and out of just like cultural prison culture. You know what I mean? We live in, in the heightened America imprisons more people than anyone, right? In the, in the world, it's ridiculous, right? And they're all black and brown people. It's been this state of modern slavery where we have to believe our own inferiority. We have to believe like that our way of paying our karma off is through enduring this pain of time, Saturn, right? And yet Saturn wants us to step up to our fears, right? To look in the mirror and see perhaps horns or see your deepest fear, your deepest hurt, see you fucked up and come apart and just this three of swords, like bleeding heart moment, right? And not leave and like be there with it. Right. And then you will find, though, like this courageous expansion, this opening. And so this Deccan asks us, like, what desires, needs, and longing need to be, be communicated for you to choose a partner in integrity? Right. In order for you to have a person that you know is like going to be there for all of you, not just the pretty you, right? But the like deeply soul beautiful you, what needs to be communicated? What needs to be disclosed before that commitment can be made in like, where, what is it like, uh, I forget the term, but there's like the informed consent and there's like a full and informed consent or something like that, right? And there's one where you say yes. Uh, I've, what was I listening to? It was some podcast and they were like 18 and they said they had said yes, but it was not a full and informed consent. And that's a whole different thing, right? And this is that. It's like before you're just trying to bag someone, hook someone type of thing, you know, and vice versa, what do we need to know about each other? What is the most fundamental and potent promise you hold with yourself, right? What are the consequences, Saturn, of your commitments, Libra? What does that mean, how you're going to have to show up? Could you bear possibly dying without knowing true love? Saturn, though, is the truth. And there's, again, this, it's so ironic because we all, romantic lore, again, dissociates us. It gives us this fantasy. Um, but to actually have true love, which sees you in your pain, 
it's terrifying and people run away from it. And I think that's what happens when we get this part. There's a certain heartbreak because there's a running away from Saturn, from the truth, from accountability, to acknowledge it, to have to do the work there, to really see the injustice that happened, right? To, to do all, it's, it's a lot too. And people like can have this true heart open moment and see past your shit and shatter your illusions with a love so powerful. And so if the person breaks or, you know, a relationship breaks or there's been this experience of heartbreak, it's really to bring you back into this relationship with self and know that you're maintaining an honest, and like this, it's to bring you, like there is some way that you perhaps related in a way that is like not honest to you or that what has happened is serving your honest heart, like your deep, the truth and the true value of your heart. And that you were like, we were trying to, that's that, those are those three feathers, right? At the heart against the feather of justice. Like we were trying to bargain on our heart. You know, we were trying to put up this mask and, and just give it away in this sense. And to say yes, when it was some deeper shit that was not acknowledged. And this is like the getting it out. Um, and so, right from the two of swords, like if you don't know what you feel, then it is difficult to choose love, right? To, it is better to fall. Then you do not have to be responsible for your actions. Yet, again, this is false because Saturn ensures that we learn the consequences of our actions and our lack of responsibility for our commitments. You just, and then things just happen and you're just like, no, it's like love is a choice, okay? Um, we create these false harmonies within our body, just radiates, it just like builds up within us, right? And we're saying this one thing, another person can feel the truth in the air that is unspoken. And eventually our body is just gonna do what we're gonna do and we just ghost or don't say anything or don't communicate it. And heartbreak happens because um, we are able, we don't even know what we feel. We don't communicate that. And we can't have a true love again because the love, it just, you don't just end up in like Saturn's harvest, right? Like Saturn will kill you a few dozen times. Like, you know what I mean? Like you, you earn Saturn's harvest. You have to work the fields. It doesn't just magically happen. And so to break the fantasy of effortless human, right, is to, um, Stop investing in some sort of victimhood, believing that we are like swept away or caught up in the rapture and that we lack choice in birth. The desire to love is not to, is not itself love. Love is as love does. We do not have to love. We choose love. That is what Bella is teaching us here. And so like with this card, she makes, and maybe you could do this too, right? Like 10 qualities um, that she wanted to find in a mate that she applied. And she applied the list. So she made this list of like, things that she needs and not necessarily superficial, but perhaps like a kind heart, like someone honest, someone just, you know, these various things, maybe a half a job or something like that, passionate, okay, type of thing. Um, <laughs> and, she, and she compared this to who she was dating, who she was interacting with, and was like deeply disappointed to see that um, it was not in alignment. And so with this part, we can have the fear, Saturn, right, that there's no one out there for us to love if we present our true selves, that we will not know true love, that um, love isn't for us. And it's this fear around, around that, right? And so we make, we choose a partner, any partner to not, better than having no partner, right? Is that is the energy of this part? Like I, if I have someone, I just don't want to die alone. You know what I mean? That's like very much sad in the Libra, this whole heartbreak, like, no, I'm so alone, right? Type of vibe. <laughs> um, and yet, I think, again, this is just like a deeper initiation into love, into the real weight and love. Love is a path to divinity. Love is a path to truth. And it takes a lot. Uh, let me tell you that. All right. And so, um, like Bell writes, right? Erotic longing may be a catalyst for an intimate connection, but is not a sign of love. Exciting, pleasurable sex can take place between two people who do not know each other. Seduced by erotic desire, they often end up in relationships with partners with whom they show or share no common interests or values. The pressure to be with someone who they find sexual pleasure with is so great they ignore everything else. It really takes them not a long time to name the lovelessness that they feel. It's a deep one, right? It takes us to take them. This is a deep work. Like, again, this has been the energy of Saturn, like unmasking, going back to that pain, like speaking it. Um, there needs to be respect and care and trust and understanding and commitment, right? Beyond the sexuality part, like the true intimacy of letting another hold your heart in order to give that type of consent, it has to be a full and informed consent. 
right? And that requires really knowing each other and really saying like what your triggers are, where your wounds are, where to be careful and sensitive, right? Where you're sensitive. Um, and, and that being a method where trust is built and love can grow, right? And so Belle though writes, like, I love it because she's saying she, she has some planets here, right? Although I have experienced many disappointments in my quest to love and be loved, I still believe in the transformative power of love. Disappointment has not led me to close my heart. And I think that is just so beautiful and powerful to receive a closed heart within the two of swords. At least, again, that's from the disappointment, but still an open heart. It's going to show you the truth. It's going to show you the parts where there was a wound there and a wound there and a wound there. But there's still a heart there being cleansed, right? In the rain, being elevated, being, um, and experiencing like, these new dimensions. And so, um, you know, often, again, I think that passion point has been made. Um, I just, it's, this is like, I feel like this part can, like this part has come up for people getting married, okay? And that is because it's that sort of like lasting commitment. And so I like, I really would like to like destigmatize this part in that way. Um, and being like not so afraid of it. I think we're all afraid of it because of Saturn and has that energy. But if you see it as a chance to like work a true relationship, it gets really exciting. It's like, this could be a really true love. And that means you're going to have to like shine a light on the dark. You're going to have to integrate the dark. And that might be some scary shit that we're not ready for. But if you want true love, if it's something you really deeply committed to and feel a need within your soul, then it is powerful to be getting this card because you're like aligning to a truer love. Like you're, doing that Saturn work and you're getting closer actually to that true love by doing the work of this part, right? It may, and when we experience it, it may feel like our lives are in danger, right? It can feel like this just deep, it's just intense, right? It's like, and that's again, I think the Saturn part. Um, there's this distinction between like a passion and a heart attraction versus like a soul attraction. You know, we can love anyone type of thing. Like if we, you know, most of us are good people, right? We have good will and basic care, right? And we're consistently like attracted. Like you could give love a grow by just like give a chance for it to grow by being around them and just feeding that thing. But soul attraction, right? True deep soul love here, Saturn's, right? Is the resonance between two people who respond to the beauty of each other's essential individual natures and individual identities, right? Behind their facades who connect on a deeper level. This kind of mutual recognition provides a catalyst for a potent alchemy. It is a sacred alliance whose purpose is to help both partners discover and realize their deepest potentials. While a heart connection lets us appreciate those we love just as they are, a soul connection opens up further dimensions, seeing and loving for who they could be and for who we, who we could become under their influence. That is from John Wildwood, Love and Awakening, discovering the sacred path of intimate relationships, which Bell references. Right. And so true love is not simple or easy. And the bonding, this like relates to the bonding process in that Libra effect. Like of Libra is traditionally the seventh house, right? In the Pima Mundi, which is where marriage is formed, relationships, partnerships formed. And so there's this alchemy, middle of the deck and right, like a uh, middle of the, the sign happening. Um, and so there's this heart alchemy, uh, just ex being experienced as painful, and that is this. It's in the heart, it's with relationships, it's, but it's needed to find that Saturn, that world unification, right? To get to that state, we're working for that state. Um, and so for this, like you have to risk your truth, you have to risk disclosure, right? You have to do so in order to engage your experience with true love requires a risk. Um, and so I'm going to turn the light really fast. Just give me one moment. Realize it's getting dark here. All right, and so let's keep going. Um, any questions? Again, let me know if this is resonating. I appreciate y'all. All right, so the four of swords, Libra, three, the third deck, and Jupiter in Libra. And so we've got uh, this card to the left, the four of swords. We see these three swords hanging over the head of this warrior. It's always thought to be sarcophagus, right? Opening, they're just like, very open, the hands are up in a state of prayer. There's this window glass here. And I think this one can be confusing for folks or maybe 
not seeing, I feel that the progression from the two to three of swords is pretty clear, but maybe some people have some time with like seeing uh, the progression from the three to the four of swords, but Bell's work makes it really clear and I hope it becomes clear after this, right? Um, so again, the, this is like a little narrative arc the two, three, and four of swords and of the year. And it doesn't go then to the five, six, seven of swords, like yes, it does, but we're actually the next one in Scorpio, right? And so it's a distinct narrative through the tarot. It's one of those sort of, you know, hidden manners into, into divination, okay? Um, and so Jupiter is associated with the wheel of fortune. We're seeing those four, again, from the wheel, right? Around the wheel. And we're seeing tarot, Torah, uh, the rest of it, right? We're seeing sulfur and we're seeing the signs of alchemy around uh, the wheel, right? We're seeing the cross. From that two of swords but also it's like very much steering at the helm um this is a red anubis inflating from the underworld on the rise up right and then this golden serpent spiraling down to the underworld you see the philosopher's stone at the top of the wheel right holding the sword of truth like the alchemy alchemy that has happened has been formed here jupiter will of fortune is about changing circumstances the birth chart it's about a sense of coherence, a sense of like shaping change, of working with the seasons, of spiraling and cycling into higher um, truth. And again, just as we have here. And so um, let me see here. Oh, four swords is Mercury. Oh, this is that's powerful. That's powerful. Okay. Um, so your Mercury in Libra is ruled by Jupiter. Okay. So also pay attention like, to that Jupiter. Um, Jupiter and Libra here. And so let me see. Let's keep going. So this is from October 12th or you know, 12, 13th through October 21st through 22nd. So we're still in that three of swords period, right? Real time. Okay. Um, we're all, we're about to be in this last decade of Libra, like it's a calendar of space. And so there still may be some alchemy happening with the heartache and with the hurt. And with the truth, though, when you can finally like say the truth, it's like this big release. Um, self, and remember again from all of this, like self love cannot flourish in isolation, right? We need, and then it just can't. Like that's what Libra is all about the knowledge that we have to be in relationship. And if we're disconnected from ourselves, if we are isolating ourselves from the world and from ourselves, that's, that's not self love. It takes a real strength and commitment to communicate, to be able to choose a loving path and a loving heart and to seek just like which is just relationship and just balance in the world because again we're not just aries individuals alone in the world you know it, we can feel alone in the world but there's not just us in the world we have to be mindful of our responsibility and our relationship to all of our relations right and so um okay so let me see so many of us are not ready bell right so anyone who does not know love is still in debt I think that's a potent image or potent, you know, quote for this image. Anyone who does not know love is still in death. And, oof, okay, um, many of us are not ready to accept and embrace our true selves, particularly when living with integrity alienates us from our familiar worlds. Often when we undergo a process of self-recovery, for a time we may find ourselves more alone writing about choosing solitude over company that does not nurture one's soul. Maya Angelou reminds us that it is never lonesome in Babylon. We sacrifice our old selves in order to be changed by love, and we surrender to the power of the new self. Chapter 10 from All About Love, right? <laughs> um, and, I, and I just think that so beautifully articulates this four of swords. It's crazy how she's writing the images. Like she's giving, this could be written for the text. I mean, that's why I wanted to, to pair them right like i think this is such a powerful if you were flipping in a little white book and you read this right like it makes sense for the four of swords she has in her chart it's just it's just too good um and so this can be a space right we're in a holy space we're in a sanctuary here we're in the church we're seeing here indicated by that stone glass by the mos like the sarcophagus the the you know what i'm talking about the tomb whatever what have you um and there is really choosing a solitude there's choosing a sacredness and that's we're getting that sort of spirit that sort of faith from jupiter jupiter is the preacher right jupiter is um god and religion and like the the 
Sagittarius is like the converter or whatever it is. The, I mean, it can be colonial and it can be absolutely um, in the Christian, you know, colonialism and the Catholic, the Catholic church and revolution, all those things. Um, but it is this sense of spirituality and this like guru and this prayer and this meditation and this deep faith, right? And so we're sort of getting that here. Now we're mixing from uh, meeting the truth and acknowledging like an injustice, acknowledging something deep within us we're from the that we denied in the two, except are shown, opened to within the three of swords, we move to the four of swords where it is more of a switch to recovery, right? There's like a distinction, there's, it's not there. <laughs> there's a false self, there's an injustice at play with the two, there's like some lies happening, there's some, and even if it's not a direct lie, there is like not truth, okay? And that's why, like, you know, you can try and play around with it, but it's like, how committed to your honesty are you? And that two of swords is showing up like, you're, you gotta tighten that up, okay? And then the three of swords is where we're confronting it. We're looking at it, we're admitting it. We're like taking the risk to speak our truth, but it's like, you have to be willing to pay that risk and to pay that, like go through that moment of alchemy in order to make the commitment real. Like it changes the commitment in the act of communication itself. It really transforms the whole dynamic into like a true bond, right? And it's, that's that three of swords. And now in the four of swords, we are undergoing this process of self-recovery, right? From that alienation. And so there's no longer, there's like a separating from all the bonds that we built um, that are based in this falsehood right? All the relationships and friendships and all the things that were based upon a certain idea, a certain persona um, are being cleared away, have been cleared away by Saturn. And so now we find ourselves alone, but it's where we begin to, like, we're, it's the whole, it's, it's a shifting nature because we may have been surrounded by people, but, but deeply lonely. And I think that's the two and three of swords. In this card, after being honest and clearing away those false people who make us alone, make us feel lonely we may be alone but we find ourselves within the presence of spirit again we return to this um it's aloneness rather than loneliness right we are like finally with ourselves and we're letting the shadow come out of the prison of the body that is what's that's what we see happening there right on the image and finally it's like in order to disclose this part is very much like with justice, I'm, all, I'm just tying it to like uh, judgment, right? In Pluto, but that's maybe just my own stuff. Uh, but the, the safe and sacred space it takes to like finally like come out and speak your truth and like doing so in, in like a confession, right? I mean, that's what, yes, confession is like a Catholic thing, but it is uh, an ancient thing. And there's like this cleansing of the self, this like purging of oneself that needs to happen and where it's not about sin or like holding yourself silencing yourself um all of those things and, and admitting sin but it's admitting pain it's admitting fear it's admitting hurt right and in giving expression it, again it transmutes it and this can be in this very solid sacred way where it's just you and spirit and this like spirit around you it can be within a friend within a client session Four of swords, like the four, right, is a stable structure. Fours relate to Aries and um, the emperor card. I mean, sorry, well, that's interesting. Anyhow, emperor and Aries. Um, but four creates a stable structure, it creates a threshold, it creates a doorway, a container. And so we're creating here what we need to, like the medicine is that in order to deal with all the wounds and the alienation of the past, we need to give ourselves like a sacred container to speak our shadow, to like go and turn for our shadow, not to do it out in the wild, right, or on the battlefield of relationships, again, because, you know, we'll love in the war, we'll love the war field and battlefield and all that stuff. Um, it is like turning away and, and taking the time for oneself um, in order to, with spirit, um, to do this gentle, deep work and like begin a process of self reconnection and like self acceptance, right? Um, the mysterious soul connection is love's attempts to call us back to our true selves, and I think, again, from that Saturn and that heartbreak, well, it's the beauty of love. And it's, the, again, that if you're pursuing a lover's path, Libra, right, in a true lover's path, that requires spirit. And so it's an initiation to go through the three of swords because it's going to take you into a deeper spiritual selfhood, right? Like that clearing way, it like undercuts your foundation, which had been too high in the sky, 
and not grounded and rooted in something like deeply soulful and spiritual and something like illuminating um this it, it brings you there that pain is like purposeful because it's, it's either way it's taking you to the sacred like exalted state of jupiter jupiter is like the deep exaltation experience of relationships and faith happens in relationships libra right and so um this part waits for the heart to awaken to overcome isolation in the presence of spirit awakening to love is a spiritual power this card encompasses that the capacity of love to become spiritual, right? And to heal and to have again this space where it's like that prison of the body that we built up or that we feel disconnected from or we're serving time in. This truer, darker thing, right, can be held in a sacred space and, and, and be free of shame, be free of judgment, be accepted and find compassion and like cleansed of its tears on its face and be told to like, the bravery of speaking one's truth is redeeming within itself, right? You see that like, because you're having the character to be honest, that that shatters the illusions of the demon that we believe ourselves to be, right? Because it, right. And so like there's, the, but you can only experience that. And so this part can be one of meditation, of needing mental calm, of needing prayer, needing to speak with spirit, right, needing to be moved and having like a commitment to spirit in order to deepen one's heart, in order to heal one's heart. When you're having a heart, when Saturn is doing work to the heart, it's hard, right? It's like truth. It's like beating you. It's working you. It's all of this pressure. It's all of this like cracking open. It feels like you're dying to have a true love. Again, like Bell Hooks literally writing about that, right? You feel the risk of putting yourself out there to love fully because you know you could be betrayed. You know, it could be hurt. You know, it's so tender and you've been hurt before all those things. Well, in order to deal with that, right. In order to handle that, we call upon a deeper spirit, upon a higher spirit to heal us, to restore us, to protect us, to love us, to find compassion. And we're brought back into ourselves in this way. And so um, Austin Coppock writes, the power of this space is to equilibrate unbalanced forces as they are in, un, as they are encountered and to maintain connection to the unmoved center. It offers the formula by which equipose, equipose may be maintained in any storm. And so Libra, right? All of the decans are about balance and somehow. There's like this primal sense of balance and imbalance in the two of swords that becomes a bit more refined and a bit more organized with like three of swords. And now at the, at the Libra three, it's like meta balance. Like how do we balance like these big philosophical issues? Like how is balance balanced with imbalance, right? Like this type of nature. How can we maintain like all of our spiraling commitments to self, to spirit, to family and friends and earth and all of the shit we got going on, right? Um, and it's like this still center and it's like the gyroscope with all the like rotating things around like the still center, right? And so rather than retreating, rather than like going back on our work, right? And so if we make that true commitment, Saturn, it's like for life, baby. Saturn is like for life. Like this thing is set. This thing is set in stone, right? If you break this commitment, it, there will be pain. There will be consequence. That's just it, right? But if you honor this commitment and the work required, there is also consequence. Our experience of them may differ greatly, right? Of those same consequences, or not same consequences, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and so within Jupiter and Libra, right, we're getting the, the, the restoration of spirit to be able to endure with such a big commitment and such a maintaining the weight of that truth, right? Um, and so it's like the rest and it's like the long haul, you know, so you don't burn out and you just like retract and you, you said, you know what I said? Yes, but I actually cannot do this. And you break the commitment. Instead, we go and we pray and we admit our fears about our, our capacity. We admit, you know, our shame. We admit like the things we're struggling with. Like we go and we have a moment and we unburden ourselves and it can be just a spirit, right? And they're in that way. There's a cleansing. There's like a strengthening. There's a, a spiritualizing that happens that allows us again to endure. Um, in this space, we find that with a, without a life affirming spirituality, we become bored, violent people. And so it's really interesting because this Deccan as well, like within the ancient texts, talk about all of this debauchery that happens with like folks in this, who have placements in this Deccan, 
like all of this like lawlessness and all of this like un like when you think about the social jupiter is a social planet contract being broken down and everyone's just out here wilding out on each other like there's no commitment to like the social contract right it's like sort of broken and where do you find solace or where do you find protection in that is through spirit is through space is through this like um i just a really safe psychic space that's being constructed here um and it allows us to again to weather the storm and like uh you know, it gets a little higher font, you know, it's like things changing, like I could go there, but I won't, let me see. Um, facing the possibility of death as well. So what we're seeing here is like, on another note, right? Facing the possibility of death can surmise the courage to confront the lack of love in life. Um, Bell Hooks talks about like these death scares, these like medical scares that she encountered and realizing that she can't keep going the way she's doing. It like reckons you with truth in a different way to really change her way of being and so also i'm you know the dead or the dying what there's this deep need to unburden the soul before before transitioning before moving on before going to a new stage like you can't keep that with you and i think that's just like this soul impulse that we know and and know as well by like someone passing on and not saying what we needed to say for closure right like not this the impulse of this is to not die with anything left unsaid right and i it's just a powerful part of that like libra deck and in this like real commitment to, to truth and honesty within a relationship within like a soulful life and death type of relationship um and so we're sort of getting an image here and i think it could be a reminder like of all of these different ways of accessing that i hope i'm making clear which is like one um, creating a safe and sacred space for you to to confess basically <laughs> okay to say the thing to break down to like let your shadow out and know that it's in a safe and protected space Two, right that there's um the heartbreak is like leading you to this spiritual power to restore and heal the heart and you can like that being a part of love's path like I, I love is just going to take true lovers all know the path of that again it's a badge that three of swords it's like yep i got that badge like i went to that too i know that stage and being brought into this deep spirituality because that's what love is right um and then the the sort of warning or the sort of like uh you know ghost of christmas like the just hey like if you keep progressing right if we're going from the two to three to the four like okay you withheld your truth you felt the heartbreak and do you want to die with this you know, do you want to die with this shadow, with this secret? Like, can you handle, are you willing to take this to the grave? Like, what would happen if you unburdened yourself, right? And again, like, the, I think the contrast is like the people who die with it, who don't unburden themselves, who don't admit the pain or who don't go to the work and don't find that restoration of spirit, become these violent people, become these like debaucherous, like soulless people, you know? And it feels, it's very scary, right? To see people fully in their masks and just like all the way in you know and so here we're confronted as this, with a state of lovelessness as death there's also that as well that's another way like what it is to be <laughs> without love right is to feel this deep void at the same time right everything within us is silent and still and moved um and so what is being preyed upon by a culture which courts death i think is another issue our big question of this card we have Jupiter against this, like society, Libra is all about justice. Like there's these whole cultural considerations of how we're taught truth and model truth and like how the justice system is being upheld. And we know capitalist colonial, colonial society and civilization is a death culture, right? And so um, then the values, the spirit, the, the value system, the faith is being taken away from that, is being like diminished, right? What is being prayed for here? Like, what are we praying for? Um, what is your shelter in the storm? How do you sustain your joy in living? How do we guard the internal gates, right? Out of an exception with safety from fearing the stranger, directing our fear toward the unknown and the unfamiliar. And I think that's, that it is well, like within Libra and the two of swords, there can be this control and this um, getting a desired response out of safety and out of like, fearing a lack of control that Saturn initiates us <laughs> into and like humbles us to, right? Um, 
And so there's like this need for safety and there's like this fear of the unknown, fear of the other, Libra, right? Fear of the shadow, fear of this thing that you just like cannot acknowledge. And yet it's often that thing that we seek most, that, that is a transformation, that is a threshold, right? How does love inform the way you grieve? Um, what needs to be said so you can find peace? I think these are all major just energies of this card, like say your peace, right? Say your peace basically in this card. This is the deathbed recognition of love's power. You go to the deathbed and you feel the power of that true love and what's there with you, right? And who is there and who knows you deeply and not like sort of dying without that. Um, oh, not even accomplished because it's like, but that sort of growth into, right? Um, and so with this card, I think this Jupiter, it's like when we love deeply, we are utterly changed because it's that will of fortune and that will of fortune is like change, right? love transforms our entire life. It, genuine love is a personal revolution. Love takes your ideas, your desires, your actions, and welds them together in one experience and one living reality, which is a new you, right? And so this card is like a sacrifice of the old self in order to be changed by love and to surrender to the power of the new self. Um, and so this, this can be that estrangement. I mean, I think again, that's that two of, that two of swords much more so, right? Um, this is about how we either grieve in private as well. And the way we grieve is informed by whether we know love. Like that's what this card is talking about, right? Um, when we lose someone we love, we can grieve without shame because love knows no shame. And so it's like if we, it's the opposite end where it's like if you die with regret and you, you die sort of not loving deeply and intensely, that's a certain different kind of pain. That's informing how you grieve but that lasting connection beyond life and death, beyond the veil, high priestess and like justice, right? That they guard beyond the veil. If you're truth, you can go beyond that veil. It can, you, you can speak to the shy. You can speak to spirit. You can feel that presence. Like that love will sustain you. And you're able to do so proudly knowing that like you gave it your all, that like they knew you, you knew them. And like, you know, it's a deeply spiritualizing process to, um, it, it just deepened the spirit so deeply. And so mourning is this expression of commitment, right? This is like, again, that commitment from Saturday like, to life and death. And we're like bound to death here, right? In the four swords. Um, it's a mourning is a form of communication, swords, right? And communion. Grief can be a means to intensify our love for the dead and die. For those who remain alive, we need not contain it, right? And so it's like all about un like freeing the self, like letting the self be uncontained. And again, like this grief deepening the love. And it's, it's not, it's just so badass. I just love it because, you know, people who like superficialize Venus and Libra and all these things. But there's like this deep spiritual power, this deep warrior energy because swords, right? And scales and like truth and justice. And that's only known by injustice, right? Um, Bells says, right? Love is the only force that allows us to hold another close beyond the grave, knowing how to love each other is also a way of knowing how to die. The embodied, the end of embodied life is not the death of spirit. And I think that's what we're really seeing here. Um, again, like knowing how to love each other is also a way of knowing how to die. And that is because love is, when we, we saw the Saturn, but the transformation of self that happens when you truly love, when you truly change. Change is associated with death and life and birth, right? Things are constantly dying. Things are constantly changing. And so to give up the control of like this fixed mask identity to discover the self, to embrace deeply the other, the unknown, right? To, to unite with the deeply is to embrace the change of your identity. To like lean into death is like this final commitment. So like love, this deep commitment, like to, if you had to show how much do you love me? Would you die for me? And I mean, that could be maybe scorpionic of me. It could be a little intense, but truly like that lasting commitment to like, yes, because you, it shatters an illusion of death. It shatters the veil of death, right? And so um, that depth of truth of commitment is, it then transforms your whole small, like ego built self and persona. And you allow yourself to like, let another in, to let spirit in. It becomes something even better. Um, this sword can speak to, this sword, this card can speak to creating again, a sanctuary. Um, if I give, if I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gang or clanging symbol. 
And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and I deliver, if I deliver my body to the burn, but have not love, I gain nothing. And this is First Corinthians. And I think this is just speaking to this nature of this void without knowing love, but being in this like spiritual state, right? Um, and so there's a way that justice can restore balance and like fortune, Jupiter and justice. We're getting these two virtues, right? Or these two like energies um, being a remedy to like the injustice of society, the ills of society, the violence of society, right? Um, and so Bell's writing, right? A culture that is dead to love can only be reawakened by a spiritual awakening. And I think that this is that larger social commentary. Like we need to awaken into a, a deep spiritual respect and understanding to shift from this culture of death that is terrifying. And so it shows just the strength of love, I think, to be death. I think that's it. I think I will stop there. Um, there's, you know, I have a lot always, of course, but it's just these cards are really beautiful and just encountering like going and healing a child wound, um, being brave enough to be honest and unmask yourself for the first time and like what that might be and who that identity might become, right? Um, being able to wrestle with angels in a sense that we fear is our shadows, right? To be able to embrace the woundedness of the three of swords is actually a gift because that is the path which takes us to the healing, right? That is the path which takes us back to spirit, right? It's where you, the wound is where you realize that you had this like false idea and this false attachment or this, um, and, and maybe it's not, I don't mean to like minimize or these things that we've built up and believed because of uh, that was the best we could cope as children, right? That was the best we knew and, and it became so familiar that we don't even realize. And so that wound is a pressure point to like, it's a gift of truth where you can, where we can begin to do the work of true love, um, to find greater freedom, to know soul satisfying love, right? To be able to die without regret. Um, and so as we, from the heartbreak, we become aware of the soul connection and what's required for a spiritual love, which is a gift, um, this whole swords deck in is about unlearning that it is a virtue to be silent, right? And knowing the difference between like silence and solitude. Um, there's no shame in being wounded and you are not accountable necessarily for being wounded or not, or not, or not to blame for the wound, but we must take honest acceptance and responsibility for healing it and accept our vulnerability. Right. And I think the two swords like this stone wall face is like, I'm not vulnerable. The moon and Libra moon, air moons can be like, I just have ideas. Right. Like I don't have a fleshy feeling body. Right. And then until you're like, you are vulnerable and protect that and embrace that. Right. It's not a weakness. Um, being able to like turn towards the shadow with the clear and focused mind and open heart. Right. Um, it's, it just means that we're able to be ex experience a touch of salvation, of freedom, of being saved um it's an inner opening and i think that's what's happening as well here where it's you're finally from this exterior there was no seeing there was no sight right but now what's happening is like we're opening the crypt we're opening the underworld stuff and we're looking into that shadow and there's like that's the gift is like this deepening of interiority of experience not just the surface exterior level but this deep soul stirring like infinite love um and by coming right to this face to face with like a profound anguish. That's where we experience change. That's where we can convert. That's where we can communicate with spirit. And I don't mean to a religion. I just mean like back into the natural way of your spiritual selfhood, right? And, and begin to just sit in love's mystery here. Um, and so uh, I think that is all I have. Yes, okay. Um, I will stop to share there. <laughs> um, thank you for sticking with me. I hope that you've learned something about the Deccans and about justice and about like Val Hooks's perspective on these things. Again, is very much informed by uh, the lovely Val Hooks. I invite you to read her book. Um, and I will leave you with a quote and we will close. <sighs> Let me know if you have any questions. 
Otherwise we will close. I invite you to take an exhale whenever you're watching this. And so like Jacob wandering alone by the stream, in the stillness of my pitch dark room, I grappled with the metaphysics of love, seeking to understand love's mystery. The grappling continued until my senses intensified and a new vision of love came to me. Thank you.